Join up for real stunner. I'ma do my numbers. I'm like the glove on this prime. Taking the ball from you. I'm a cold trotter. My three game off the chain. Man, I'm in the lane. LeBron James, I'ma bang that. Better get out my way. They see it in the stands. With Hamilton with the hands. Truck slam dunk champ. The competition man. Y'all ain't got a chance. Plus I can hit that three with three seconds left. And I'm down by two. In the last of a seven game series to beat you. What's up, guys? It's the Connor Mack Show, and today we're going to talk about the remarkable Atlanta Hawks turnaround that we've seen this season, what led to that, and why it's very similar to the Golden State Warriors. So, after the Atlanta Hawks were thoroughly bounced in the 2015 East Finals, despite having four All Stars in the East Bets record, it was clear that the group had no long term staying power and it had reached its peak. Two more years of first and second round exits set the franchise into a rebuild, and coach Mike Budenholzer to Milwaukee. After 10 years straight of making the playoffs, a front office shakeup and roster overhaul was on the horizon. The Hawks didn't want to turn into the Orlando Magic, who were too good for high draft picks but not good enough to win a title. Ownership locked in on Golden State Assistant General Manager Travis Schlank as their new executive, whose track record was remarkable in his 12 years with the Warriors. He was instrumental in identifying Draymond Green with the 35th pick in the 2012 draft. After consulting with Jerry West, he also identified Klay Thompson in 2011. It was clear upon his hiring that Atlanta would be remade in the image of the Warriors, and his first selection as general manager in 2017 was to draft a Draymond prototype and first team all ACC player John Collins out of Wake Forest with the 19th pick. Collins exploded his sophomore season but still wasn't viewed as a lottery level talent. By Draymond prototype I mean an athletic stretch four who can switch and not be a liability at both ends of the floor. He's nowhere near Draymond defensively, but his surprising leap as nearly a 40% three-point shooter on four attempts per game make the offense of the Atlanta Hawks hard to guard. After not shooting hardly at all from three in college, Collins has elite shooting ability now and the athleticism to make it a tough cover, like Draymond did in his 2016 peak. Finding a 20 point per game score outside of the lottery is a great way to start your general manager career. After a 24-58 season in 2017-2018, the 2018 offseason was a famous one for Atlanta as the Schlenk era was really about to begin. The selection of Trey Young after the Luka Doncic draft day trade cemented Schlenk's vision as Young being a Steph Curry light type player, a dynamic guard with range who can be a weapon in the modern NBA. The deal also netted a first round pick the following year, which would later turn into Cam Reddish. Young's stock rose rapidly similar to Steph Curry's and both had similar draft concerns poor defensively, turnover prone, and wild shot selection. But with Young, his was more concerning because he's two inches shorter than Curry and had worse efficiency numbers from three in shooting in general. But as we would all later find out, Young's comparisons to Curry were misguided because he plays more like a Steve Nash-James Harden hybrid. In his college breakout game against Oregon, Young finished with 43 points and was 17 of 18 from the free throw line. This skill would carry over into the league and what also carried over was his passing ability as he tied the NCAA record for assists in a game with 22 and led the nation in both scoring and assists per game in 2018. It would be up to the Hawks to surround him with good players to complement this high usage, but creative play style. In addition to Young, Schlenk drafted Maryland sharpshooter Kevin Herter with the 19th pick, again finding another player who leaped his sophomore year and shot 41% from three. Herter was an obvious Clay Thompson inspired pick, as at 6'7, Herter's size gives him the ability to shoot over defenders and hold his own on the defensive end. Herter's all-rookie second-team selection and role next to Young cemented this as another post-lottery steal. This offseason also saw Dennis Schroeder get traded away to Oklahoma City, and the Hawks hiring new head coach Lloyd Pierce. Pierce's first season, obviously, was painful, as the Hawks finished 29-53 and, and had the league's worst defense. Young's defensive liabilities were exposed because of a lack of wing defenders and slow big men like Alex Len and Miles Plumlee. Young and Collins both averaged close to 20 points per game and were forming a nice combo, but much more development was needed with Young's efficiency and decision making. The 2019 draft saw them address all but one of their needs, with drafting athletic wing Cam Reddish at pick 10 and the pick conveyed from the Luka deal, and trading up to number 4 with New Orleans to select all-ACC defensive player DeAndre Hunter from Virginia. Hunter exploded his sophomore season, combining his freakish defensive gifts at 6'7", 225 pounds, with averaging 16 a game while shooting 43% from 3 and 52 from the field, for a team that played at the slowest pace in the country. Hunter was the ideal fit next to Young, 
and the Andre Iguodala Harrison Barnes comparisons for Reddish and Hunter were really clear to see. The 1920 season saw more struggles under Pierce, as they remained close to dead last in almost every defensive category. But Young's leap was noticeable, as he used almost a 30 points per game scorer, a 10 point improvement from last year, and it also saw improvements with his shooting efficiency and his overall decision making. But with this increased usage rate did come turnovers, averaging almost 5 turnovers per game, and critics still said he wasn't a winning player and simply put up empty stats. Hunter and Reddish both struggled their rookie years with efficiency as well, but it gave the roster a new look with more athleticism, which would help them in the long run. The most important realization from this season is that Trey Young's playstyle was like the hypercharged Steve Nash, James Harden thing I was talking about, and that the Hawks needed to add pieces to complement Trey's elite ability in the pick and roll. Due to Houston's struggles with spacing the floor with Russell Westbrook and needing to add four shooters around him, the Hawks jumped into the ring and acquired Clint Capella in the four-team trade that sent Robert Covington to Houston. Capella, who just received a big extension and was having a down year, possesses the elite athleticism, rebounding, and defense that the Hawks sorely were missing inside. Capella's presence as a lob threat opened up more avenues for Young to make the offense more dynamic, but we didn't see too much of it because the season ended a month later. The ensuing 2020 draft saw the Hawks take another athletic big as Anyeka Okongwu's ability to produce elite defense and add scoring and rim running meant that there would be no defensive drop off when Capella went out. As of late, he's really played a big role after getting hurt early in the season. Both of the center's ability to switch effectively likens the comparisons to Kevon Looney, but this element of the pick and roll lob threat is something that's unique to Trey Young because his ability to impact the game on the ball is much greater than off the ball like his Stephen Curry. With all their best players on cheap rookie deals and money to spend, Schlenk went big with free agency signings including Bogdan Bogdanovich, who provided more size at 6'6 and buddy breakout potential as he increased his scoring every year in Sacramento and shot 43% from 3 this season. The Hawks also traded for Danilo Gallinari, who despite his age had a great season with the Thunder the year before. Lou Williams would also come over to the Hawks after the Ray John Rondo experiment didn't work out, and he, like Trey Young, can create off the bounce and gives them a solid backup point option. But after a 14-20 start to this season, tension with head coach Lloyd Pierce and a multitude of injuries led to a coaching change, and he was fired and then Nate McMillan took over. They would proceed to go 27-11 the rest of the way, and the roster construction finally met a coach who fit the pieces together. With athletic wings in the starting lineup and little drop off at any position, the Hawks had 8 people average double figure scoring and leaped from the second worst defense in the league to the 12th highest ranked defense just in one season. DeAndre Hunter took a massive leap, improving his field goal percentage by 7 points, and Young averaged 25 with the most help he's had in his career. The Hawks dispatched the Knicks and the 76ers largely because their rotations have very little weaknesses and can match up with almost every star. And they have all the elements to be a title contender in the modern NBA, switchable wings, three-point shooting, and more than one shot creator. The Hawks' leap is happening much sooner than expected because in a year of injuries, their roster is built to withstand it. And when you compare it to the Warriors' leap in 2013, they may even be taking that leap a year sooner than they did. They became the first team since the 1994 Pacers to make the conference finals without an all-star, but in the years coming, they will be represented on that stage and as a real contender in the playoffs. Nate McMillan's turnaround of this team is one with very few historical precedent, and the Hawks are running up their earnings this year, playing with almost no expectations and house money. If you guys enjoyed this video, I really appreciate if you uh, leave a like, comment, let me know what you think. Uh, more to come, more NBA content, and as always, uh, like and subscribe.